component testing with Playwright. Hi, everyone. My name is Debbie O'Brien. I'm a senior pro program manager at Microsoft working uh, on advocating for Playwright. I'm an international speaker, teacher, YouTuber, open source contributor, and I absolutely love sport from running to cycling to skiing or playing paddle. And I'm a fourth degree black belt in Taekwondo. So let's talk about Playwright testing. Playwright is reliable end to end testing for modern web apps. It can run on any browser, any platform with one API, full isolation. All your tests are run in isolation, fast execution, and it's got some powerful tooling. I'm going to show you a little bit of that now. So to get started, you can actually just use the VS Code extension, which makes it really, really easy. If you're not using the VS Code extension, you can use the CLI, but I'm going to show you the VS Code extension. So basically install it. And then all you got to do is in the command panel, right? Install Playwright. And that will install everything that is needed to get your tests up and running. You can choose while you're installing if you want Chromium, Firefox, WebKit, only one of them, two of them, three of them, all of them, whatever. You can also choose to install GitHub Actions. Now, this is really cool, and I'll show you a little bit of that later, but it will set up the whole GitHub Actions for you so you can run your tests on CI without any extra work. Amazing. So once you've uh, installed, and I've just run this on like a Vite project, um, you're going to get that GitHub folder with the GitHub actions. You're going to get a test folder. There's going to be an example test in there and a test example folder with a bigger example test that you can go through in your own time, which is the to do app. And then the playwright config in case you need to configure anything else. Now, running your tests, you can run all your tests. You can run a set of tests, single test, all tests run in parallel, and that makes them super, super, super fast. Now, to run your tests, we can do this right in VS Code, which is really, really cool. So basically, there's a testing sidebar. We can click on that, and we can go to the test folder. And there's our example test. We can open that file, and you'll see a little green triangle. And you can click that, and it's going to run the test for you. Now, I have Show Browser selected, so this is going to open the browser, and it will run through that test really quickly. Now, it's just a simple example test, so it's very short. But basically, that's how you would run your tests. Now, what about debugging when things go wrong? Because things always go wrong with testing, don't they? Yes. Well, right in, B in VS Code, you're going to have error messaging. So you can live debug, and you can see the error messages really easy. Let me show you. We're going to take this test, and we're going to just you know break it. This is the example test that comes when you install. We're going to write the text equals star, for example. So we'll rerun that test, and it's going to break. Now, why does it break? It breaks because it says error, strict mode violation. So by default, Playwright is in strict mode, which basically means uh, Playwright is looking for the word star, and it finds it in star, in started, and therefore there's more than one um, of these selectors, and it doesn't know which one to select. So we can get a breakpoint here. So we can just kind of run in debug mode, so we can kind of see visually you know, what's going on and what do I mean by that. So we look over here in the browser. We've got get started, text equals star. So it found star in get started, it found star in star. And down at the very bottom, it also found the word star in getting started. So playwrights like, which one do you want me to choose? I'm not really sure. So that's what happens with strict mode. So you should really like, you know, create your selectors so they're really resilient. So we put started. We still have one of two, right? So it's still like, I don't know which one you want me to click, which one, which one. So be very, very cautious of that and make sure you're choosing the right selectors. So here we want the actual word get started, which is unique. Now we could improve that so much more by yeah, making sure it's um, you know, in a certain place, in the header, for example, in a hero. Uh, you can really like make sure that those are more resilient. So we rerun that test anyway with that selector and that was going to pass. So again, make sure your tests are written correctly, your selectors are the correct ones, and that will um, make your tests run much better. But live debugging, very, very cool. Um, locators. So locators are a way to find elements on the page at any moment with built-in auto-weighting and retryability. So you don't need to do anything extra. It just works out of the box. So that's really cool. And we saw a locator there uh, in the last test we were breaking. So this is basically it. It's uh, created with page.locator and then a selector with the options. It's strict by default, which we saw. So here it's like const get started. I'm creating that locator. I'm calling it get started. And I'm saying page.locator. So I want to find the locator in the page with the selector of text equals get started. Now we can use a CSS selector. We could use an ID selector. There's a load of different selectors. I'm just using the text one here. And we can prove that we could say a H1 has text of get started, et cetera. So there's a lot of ways. And I advise you to do check out the docs on our um, selectors to find more information on that. 
Now you can also pick a selector by hovering over. So right here, I can click the pick selector from the box and I can hover over things and you can see like the P has text, text equals, H1 has text, installation, um, area label, uh, span has text, uh, span has text again. Here we've got an area label. And if I click on it, it's gonna select that one. It's gonna put it in the pick selector box in VS Code. And I can literally just press enter and it will copy it to the clipboard. Okay, so that makes it kind of easier to kind of understand a little bit about what selectors there are. Um, so yeah, this one is good. Aside, and in the aside, it's got a text of writing tests. So I can basically choose that by pressing enter. Now it's copied to my clipboard and I can just paste it into my test and then I can run my test and, and keep uh, building my tests. So make sure you're using web first assertions. We have a lot of assertions here. Um, await, expect locator to be checked, to be disabled, editable, to be empty, to be enabled, to be focused, to be hidden, to be visible, to contain text, to have attributes, to have class, to have count, to have CSS, to have ID, to have JS property, to have text, to have title, to have URL, to have value, to have screenshot, and so much more. So do check the web first assertions on that, and that's going to really help you write better tests. So talking about writing better tests, we have our friend CodeGen. CodeGen is a code generator. It's going to generate your tests by recording your actions. So this is a really good way of getting started with testing, especially if you're new to testing or if you're trying to encourage people to just, you know, get in the door and get started. So let me show you CodeGen in action. Again, in the testing sidebar here, we can click record new and it's going to open up a browser. But if you look over here in VS Code, it has created a test dash one dot spec .ts file. It's importing the test and it's starting to write my test. So I'm going to put in here, let's test the Veet website. Make sure it's good. So here you can see a wait page go to and it's going to the right URL. Perfect. And I can click on here, for example, on the word Veet and it's going to, you know, add that in here. Uh, let's click on guide, for example. And here we've got the guide up and running. And oh, I've got Vconf. Let's click Vconf. That's going to open up a new tab. Do you see that? That's great. And I can, you know, click on the Vconf, make sure that text is there. So we're on the right page. And let's scroll down and the speakers. Woohoo. Oh, there I am. Look at that. Component testing with Playwright. We click on that. And it's opened up the, um, the, the scheduling here. And this is the component testing Playwright talk. Amazing. So here I've got like my test run. Now look at this page one. So I've got page and page ones. I've got two different pages going on, as we've seen. And I'm able to run tests across two different tabs. That's really cool. So here now I'm back in the first test. And I'm back on the page instead of page one. And I can like, you know, alternate between the two of them, which is really good if you're testing a chat application or something like this. Um, and here's my beautiful, um, beautiful test generated for me. I can stop that and then I can basically rework that test and make it better. So it's just generated all that code for me without me having to do anything in just a matter of seconds. So that's pretty cool. Now, after this, we need to improve the test, right? So we again start using our web first assertions. So we go in here and we can have a look at our test and say, right, uh, this is using span has text read. Okay, span is not great. Let's make sure it's in the H1 block, right? So the H1 needs to contain the text of it. And let's create an actual expect here. We didn't want, really want to click. It's not a click event. It's just we want it to be visible. We want to make sure that's on the page. So we can use to be and look at all the um, autocomplete here. It's giving me all the options and I want to be visible. So I'll select that one there. I want the page locator h1 as text beat to be visible on the page once I go to that main home page. I'll rerun that test uh, to make sure it's working. And yep, still working. That's great. And I'll carry on to improve this test a little bit more. So what happens here? Um, again, this is a I've got a double click here because I was clicking before. So I'll remove that. We don't need that. So we can remove this uh, completely. Um, so the next thing is that we're clicking on the word guide. That's great. And that's giving us um, Oh, sorry, we're clicking on Vite. Yes, we're going to page one. We're waiting the pop up and clicking on the text Vconf. And when we've clicked on that, we want to make sure the text Vconf is there. So we're going to expect and we're going to say page one, our new page, locator H1 has text Vconf. We wanted to make sure that is visible instead of clicking it. Okay, we did click it, but we want it to be visible. That's the test we want to run. So now we can say await page one locator text equals component test and play, right? Yeah, that's good. We are clicking that and we're expecting the URL to bring us down to that schedule uh, part of that page. And here we've got um, await and we're going to expect the page one for, to have the text. We want it to be visible rather than clicking on that. So we want text equals component testing and play, right? To be visible. And now we have a much better test. So we can rerun that to make sure it works. And yes, it's working as expected. 
So we're pretty happy with that. And that's good. Oh, we could continue to improve that test some more. And that's basically how you should use your web first assertions, especially after running the generator. So let's talk about component testing because we're all here for component testing. Art me now that you know and understand how Playwright works, basically you can run your end-to-end -end tests, but at the same time you can start creating your component tests. So basically I've got a, a beat application here and I've taken the hello world component and literally just split it up into separate components, a card component that uh, uses slots to contain the count, the count, uh, which is basically just counting, and then the title, which just has the title. So just three simple components, and I'm gonna write tests for each of those. Now, to install Playwright component testing, we'll do npm init Playwright at latest dash 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 ct. That will install the config file for my Playwright testing and everything I need for that to work. So once that's done, I need to like install global styles, and I'll show you what I mean by this. So. Here I've written my first test, which is the counter. I'm basically importing the test and expect from experimental, it's still experimental, uh, CT view. I'm importing my count component and I'm just making, just, you know, it should just be incrementing when clicked. So I mount the component. So component equals await mount and I'm mounting that count component that I've imported. And I'm saying, I want the component to contain the text count equals one. But when I go and click that component, I'm expecting that component to contain the text count equals one. Sorry, the last one was zero, this one is one. And now I click it again and the component should count equals two, right? So if I run that test, it's gonna open up this browser and I see my component and it's got count as two. It kind of clicked it, but you just, it was so fast you didn't see it, right? Um, now what happens here is there's no style. So if I inspect this a little bit, I can go in here and look at the, it's a div ID equals root and the button is just placed inside the root. There's nothing else there. It's title testing page. Um, there's nothing. It's just empty, right? It's tested in isolation. Now, if I wanted styles, because my styles are down here in the style.css file, I've got some button styles here. Now, this came with the beat app. So these are kind of the styles that are global. And I want every single button to get this style. Now, we could put this in the actual component itself. But because they're global, I just want to actually include this. So all my tests are going to run with this. So this is the title testing page. That's where that comes from. But in the index.ts file, I can import any style sheet I want. So in here, I'll import uh, from the source folder. I'm going to import that um, style.css file that's just down there um, in the source folder. And that will then add all the CSS I need for every component that's going to be mounted for testing. OK, so style.css is imported now i'll just show you what that looks like when i start running that test you're going to get that button styles from that global css style sheet so here we go and i'll rerun this and now my count component is beautifully styled taking the styles from the global component uh, component so basically yeah you can run your styles in your component you can have styles that are you know theming component etc um and that's how you'd add them and you can see now in the head tag i've basically got um the link rel style sheet, that style sheet has now been added in here. And that's how I'm getting my beautiful styles for the button. And it's working as expected. So that's how you do that. So basically, um, you can rerun the tests right there. Uh, and you can see it zero one two. Did you see that was really, really fast, but you can see uh, that that's loading with the styles as expected. Um, now you can have various component tests. So I wrote, I created three components. So obviously I created three component tests. So when you're working and basically building your components, you can just open that test file and I can say like, I'm testing the prop here that has a message of V and play playwright. And I'm going to click there and that's working as expected. I can see it there in the browser. Um, so that looks good. That's exactly what I expect from my title. Uh, if I remove that message prop, I've got nothing. It's going to break. It's going to tell me, Hey, um, I'm trying to I'm trying to find this and I can't find it. I expected to be in playwright and I got nothing. So um, you can obviously then start going and fixing that. And as you're fixing it and you put that prop back, um, rerun that test. Your test is now passing and that's good. You can move on to the next one. If I go to the um, card, the card is using the v v slot count and it's basically putting that count component inside the card. And if I run that test, I can see uh, that component working as well. So it's a really nice and comfortable way of running through your tests and building your components. And then, you know, basically just uh, testing them out, working on them and seeing them um, in the browser, just kind of just a really nice experience. So how is it working exactly? Well, basically Node.js, right? Um, 
we have our test runner, powerful test runner, built using Node.js, and then all the components are in the browser. So the button, the counter, accordion, every component is built in the browser. So we've got powerful test runner with file system access, parallelization, but then real browsers. So you've got real clicks, no emulation, real clicks, real CSS and layout, and screenshot testing. So let's have a look at how it works under the hood. You compile the component bundle on the Faceta HTML page. So under the hood, you've got a global setup. So you've got these um, components, uh, which is you know the count, the card, the title. So it looks for those. And then it basically uses Vite, yes, Playwright uses Vite to compile and bundle those components. Uh, it creates a cache, Playwright index HTML and the Playwright bundle.js. And then it uses Vite again to serve that component so using Vite, we then have that component rendered on localhost 3100, playwright index.html, playwright bundle.js. So if you're running using the terminal, you'd have to go to the localhost 3100 to see that component. If you're using VS Code, we didn't have to worry about where it was. We just clicked it, showed the browser, and it opened it up for us. And that's all being served uh, thanks to Vite. So component test features, we've got real browsers, we've got Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit, all playwright capabilities, a great developer experience, we're importing components and you can use JS syntax, uh, JSX syntax where possible, um, handling component events in tests, VS code extension, we just saw debugging, we just saw and playwright tracing, etc. Let me show you a little bit about that. So to get a playwright trace, first, we've got to show you the reports. So we can run the test using the CLI. Once we do that, we can then use NPX playwright show report. Now that will give us a report of all the components run on all the browsers, and we could go through all of those. We could see what tests have passed, flaky, failed, skipped tests, et cetera. We could save a whole report of it. Now, we can also turn on traces. So traces normally are uh, done on CI, and uh, they're done on retry, on the first retry when the, when the test fails. Uh, but you could just do it locally. If you want to see what's going on, you can use dash dash trace on to turn that trace on. So once we do that, we'll see that little trace icon here. And um, we've got all our component tests. And we can literally click on that little icon or open it if you want to and go through it. And um, now we've got a trace file for our component. So we can literally like scroll along here and see what was happening at each point in time on each event. And um, we can see every single action. And we can see like here, we uh, expect to contain text. Um, we can see the in, in the center there, the action, that red dot is on the actual. That's what we were clicking on. So that's right. That's exactly where we wanted to click. And we can see like the before and after. So in this one, you know, the before and after is the same. If we go on the click one, we got the action is, is right there and count is one, before count is one, and after count is two. So we can really understand what's going on with our component. And this is great if you have an error and you wanted to kind of figure out what's going on. Um, here's the call, expect to contain text, expression, to have text. We want the expected string, count is two. And we can see there that the received was count is two. Uh, we can also have a full log. We can see that full log of what's going on. We can look at the console for errors. We can see the network and we can see the whole source code right there. So we don't even have to open VS code to see our source code. We can see it right here on the trace um, and we can see the metadata. So this is running on Chromium is mobile is set to false. And we can like really just understand and work through every single step of that component. So you could also run tests on CI with GitHub Actions. Now we mentioned that earlier at the start of the talk that just by clicking that, you know, select um, we have GitHub Actions and that's pretty much all we need to do except we just want to add a little bit of extra. We want the tests, the component tests to run. So we're going to just add like a new name, uh, run playwright component tests, and then run npm run test ct, ct for component testing. And that will then run the component test as well as the end to end test on CI. And then literally you're just going to have all this going on every time that you make a change, every time you make a push or a pull request, uh, your tests are going to run on CI. And then you'll be able to open up that actions, open up the summary. You can go through the test and see the log if you like. You can click that Playwright report. You can download that, extract it, put it into your uh, Playwright project, and then you could open that up using NPX Playwright show report, the name of that report, which here in this case is Playwright report or whatever you download it to be. And then you'll be able to open that up and you'll be able to share it with others and they can see the trace and see what's going on in that component testing. So playwright testing, we've got the VS Code extension, we've got CodeGen, my friend, which auto generates your tests, run in debug mode, uh, locators and frame locators, iframes as well, show reports, uh, show trace files. We've just seen that, it's absolutely amazing. It auto waits built in for all actions. So there's no need for set timeout calls and so make sure you're using web first assertions. Uh, tests run in parallel, so super fast, multiple browsers and devices intercepts requests, it follows all redirects, bypasses cores, it manages cookies. Oh my gosh, are you ready to play right? I really hope you are. And welcome to the Playwright community. Thanks uh, for watching this talk. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And I really like to see more people writing tests. Let's write tests, component tests, end-to-end -end tests, everything with Playwright. Thank you very much.
बाय